Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Now Let's Review, and we're going to be reviewing the Halki Cheetah Full Suspension E-Bike next on Now Let's Review. All right, so we got the, the Halki. Hokai. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, Hokey. But it is the Cheetah, mm -hmm. and this is the dual battery version. So Jesse, maybe you can take one battery, I'll take the other. Sure. You can get it in a single battery, and I think we should talk about price right up front. Mm -hmm. Price is one of those weird things nowadays with e-bike companies, because they'll give you a you know, manufacturer suggested, but then it's always discounted. Right. So I think we'll just tell you the discounted price. Let's yeah. cut to the chase here. So if you get the one battery version, it would be this battery. It would go in here, and that would be $18.49. If you get the dual battery, which we're getting here, it's actually only $100 more at $19.49. Um, I don't know if that makes you want to get both batteries or not, but we're going to talk about the dual battery version. Um, and so, yeah, the, if you get the single battery version, it is nice because it goes right inside this frame and you don't see a battery. With the dual, you're going to see a battery. But the interesting thing about having this dual battery setup is that it's going to give you quite a range. Yeah, so the single battery setup is 16 amp hours. The double is 25 amp hours. So not quite doubling, but almost doubling your range. They claim that you're going to get 60 to 80 miles of range which is pretty serious when we're talking about e-biking. Yeah, we went for a 10 mile e-bike ride the other day. We did not have it even leave the 10 bar uh, energy bar there. So uh, yeah, I believe it. Now, the interesting thing about having two different batteries is that they give you two different keys. And two sets of them. Two sets of them. So I I've put, you know, both different keys on one key ring and then I have an, an extra backup just in case. Um, but it's weird because you have completely different keys for both of the batteries, which means that if you're missing one of them, you're not gonna get that battery out. It's really common with a lot of these e-bikes that you have to have the batteries with you for your ride. And I just, it's something I don't like to have because usually you're wearing some light bike clothes. And that's the problem. Right, you, you need the, the key to put the battery in and to get it out. It, not with this one, this one, locks itself in all by itself. And you wouldn't need the key for the ride. And you don't need the key for the ride. The you good news is you don't have to keep the key in the bike for the ride. But the reason I'm saying you want it for the ride would probably be in case you need to take them off, you know, for your bike rack, um, like we do, mm -hmm. um, and charge them. So let's just go to bike rack for a second here. This is a heavy bike and it's enormous. I had to adjust the camera just to try and fit most of the bike in frame. I think this is the longest e-bike that we've tested. Yeah, we're gonna put the dimensions up here so you can see all of those, but this is 73 pounds with the batteries on. Um, with the batteries off, obviously slightly lighter, but you're gonna wanna take them off if you put this on a bike rack. And it just barely fit on our big Yakima bike rack. Yeah, and I think that a lot of the size and, well, and, and weight comes from this massive frame right here in the middle. There's this huge space between these massive wheels um, and that does a lot to your riding posture. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. We just got back from a you know 10 mile ride and uh, we switched off so we could check it out. This is a very forward style, off-road mountain bike style ride. If that's what you like and if you're gonna go off-roading, that's probably good. But if you're gonna go what we did, which was, you know, on a rail trail and kind of leisurely, mm. then you're forward the whole time. And I gotta tell you, my forearms got really tired. My hands got really tired because my weight, a lot of my weight was on the front. Yeah, and there's no real way to adjust this. I mean, I suppose you could try and like, take this off and switch it around, but you shouldn't do that. It, it, no. it would definitely mess with how the bikes would steer and everything. It's, it's a very stable layout the way they've got it. And it, again, if that's your style, mm. um, but a lot of us don't really know what our style is. Mm. I gotta be honest, if you're an older person like me who hasn't really grown up on bikes, then you are you know what a bike is, you've ridden one, but you don't really know what you like. I would recommend going to a bike store or your friend's bike and seeing if this style of mountain bike is, is what's gonna make you happy. Right, and I totally think that for off-roading and you know super throttle and stuff like that, that's gonna be a whole lot of fun. You can definitely zip around on this thing and get a lot of range out of it. It's just a question of like, can you conceivably go you know, 80 or 85 miles, you know, hunched over the handlebars uh, like you're going up and down some mountains. Exactly. I mean, when you go mountain biking for an hour or something, that's one thing. But yeah, 85 miles means you're going to have to be on it for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and I just don't think that's plausible. But let's get into the stats. All right. So it comes in two colors, the olive, which I actually really like a lot and yeah. black. It's got a 6061 aluminum frame, 26 inch. Um, and this is really nice if you're a heavier person mm -hmm. because it can support 400 pounds. And so uh, there's a lot of bikes out there that just can't do more than 250. So if you're a heavier rider, this is probably a good bike for you. It's got an RST front fork suspension, which is adjustable and has lockout. It also has rear suspension by Fast Ace. Yeah, so 185 millimeter length, 50 millimeter travel. 
And so it's this kind of unique setup, works really well. Um, I was just bouncing around out there trying <laughs> to test it out and uh, it really soaked up the bumps well. And that goes along really well with the enormous 26 by four inch tires. Um, these are massive. These are pretty much the biggest e-bike tires that there are, unless I guess you're getting like a, a giant unicycle. Uh, <laughs> these are huge tires. I don't know if really the camera captures just how big they are compared to like what you're expecting with a normal bike, but it has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. Yeah, I mean, we went riding on two bikes the other day. One had 20 inch, four inch tires, and this has 26. So when you're hitting a curb, these handle it really nicely because you've got a bigger radius. Mm. And that's true of all bumps. It's just gonna kind of soak them up um, without even having to worry about like tire smush or suspension. It's just gonna be that it's it's this big, nice flat thing that's rolling over whatever it is. And that's gonna start to smooth things out. Kind of like how you can't ride a skateboard on gravel, right. um, but you could definitely ride this on gravel, no problemo, because the wheels are so, the radius is so big. Yeah, even kind of hard sand you can ride this on. Now the disadvantage of course is weight. Um, as we talked about before, this bike is over 70 pounds so it is not light by any means but it is a trade-off and you are of course getting really nice uh bump suppression they recommend it for riders five foot five to six foot eight so really meant for a bigger rider because this seat post is about as low as it gets and um i can just barely comfortably <laughs> fit on it i'm five foot nine so mm -hmm. yeah i think it is for a bigger rider this comes with a pretty standard uh seven speed shimano gear set i will say it's uh more tuned to kind of the higher end higher speed i was having trouble pedaling this bike with no batteries on gear one. So it, it is not like, oh, I'm in gear one, I'm gonna make it up a hill. Uh, you're gonna have to walk this bike up a hill if it's dead. Um, but luckily with the dual batteries, I don't think it's ever gonna be dead. Yeah, speaking of the power, it gets its power from a 750 watt hub motor. It's geared and it has 90 Newton meters of torque. It's 48 volt to match the 48 volts coming from the batteries. Now everything in life is a trade-off and having enormous batteries like this means that the charging time for it is uh, pretty long, six to nine hours and actually even longer if you have uh, two batteries. They both use the same charger, but that means that you can only charge one at a time. I kind of would have liked the two battery version to come with two chargers, because then you could have one at work or two at home or whatever you need. But the interesting thing is that the bike will run with just one battery on the bike itself. So even the small one, it will run. Obviously it's gonna have less range. What I really like is it has hydraulic front and rear brakes. So none of that just regular cable brakes, they feel really good for such a heavy bike. I think it was important to have. The Cheetah comes with a half twist throttle up here on the right handlebar. And it has five levels of pedal assist, also zero if you just want it to be a regular bike. And of course it has walk mode. So you can actually walk next to it and have the bike moving if you're like going up a hill or something or a bridge. Now, when we're talking about pedal assist, uh, this is a cadence sensing bike. This is kind of the cheaper option when it comes to e-bikes. And I think that they did kind of a middle of the road job here. Um, it's very similar to all cadence sensing uh, e-bikes, unfortunately, which is that you start pedaling and it doesn't really matter how fast or hard you're pedaling. It's just going to go nine miles an hour whoop, is up to level one, up to nine ish miles an hour for level one. Then you can set that higher and higher and Although, it'll just increase the speed. What I liked was when you went to level two, whereas the bike I was on went up to 15 miles an hour. This one went to 12. Right. And I just think that that's nice. I mean, I didn't like doubling my speed when I went to two. So it was nice that way. Also, what I liked was that the bike I had been on, a different bike, um, the cadence sensing was just like on, mm -hmm. off. This one, when it did turn on, was a slower ramp. So it didn't feel like it just jolted me out of my seat. Yeah, I think that the level one on this one is pretty good. It, it, the nine miles an hour is a nice, safe cruising speed for a lot of bike paths and stuff like that. Obviously, you can go higher if you want to do some more extreme stuff. But I think that it is really important to kind of have that lowered speed. Now, the one thing that I will say about all cadence sensing e-bikes is that if you go for a bike ride with two different e-bikes um, with their own cadence sensing, they are going to, um, their level ones and level twos and level threes, and level won't fours, match. they won't match up. So somebody is either going to have to use their throttle to, to catch up to the other person, or somebody's going to have to stop pedaling every three seconds in order to kind of match the speeds. It's something that we encountered on our bike ride. Um, whereas with a more expensive torque sensing setup, um, it's going to, you're going to be able to cruise at whatever speed you want. So five right. miles an hour, uh, smoothly at whatever speed you want up to whatever the top speed of the bike is. Really good to point that out. The other thing is the throttle control is just 
Jesse mentioned. What I want you guys to know is if you're in level one and you crank the throttle, mm -hmm. you'll only go up to the top speed of that level. So in this case, nine miles an hour. And that's something that some people might like, but if you don't want that, if you want to just get through an intersection without having to think about changing your levels, it's not gonna do that. And different e-bikes handle this differently. Right. Um, I personally don't really like having a, a lowered, uh, throttle control. It also drastically lowers the acceleration that you get. So if you kind of approach the stoplight, you're going to want to up it to five, zoom across, and then if you're going to be slowing back down to a normal speed, you're going to have to do, 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 do back down. Exactly. It requires more thought. But um, again, you might like that. I wish that e-bike manufacturers would actually let us, the rider, do this manually um, and, and customize it. I think this wouldn't really be that much more expensive. And then we'd have a lot more control, not just with the throttle, but with the different uh, levels of pedal assist. It would be nice to say, oh, I like eight miles an hour and then 11 and then 13. And so let's just talk about pedal assist. If you're not used to an e-bike, if this is your first e-bike that you're considering, um, I just want you to kind of fully understand how this is going to work. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. When you start pedaling, it'll get you up to whatever speed it's set at. If you try to pedal harder, it's not going to help you. It's no. going to be as if uh, somebody was pushing you and then they let go of you. And now you're trying to pedal faster than that speed. Um, with a bike this big, heavy, and with such gigantic tires, you're actually not going to be able to push that much faster. Well, let me tell you where this was a problem. So we got to a really steep hill, right? And we had to start at zero. And so I was used to my torque sensing bike and I was like, no problem. Uh and I couldn't move right. um, because I was in the wrong level setting and I wasn't, nothing was working. And so I had to basically kind of stop what I was doing, change my speed, mm -hmm. lower my gear, which by the way, you don't want to lower your gear if you're not moving. So it was a disaster. Now, maybe if I'd been prepared for that, it would have been better, but that would have meant a lot of work on my part as a rider, which I don't like doing. So that's just to say, look, if you're not going to need that, maybe this bike is for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're just going for nice leisurely rides, but then why are you riding this bike? Um, so I feel like torque sensing is something you want on an off-road bike. Here is my use case for this bike. You've decided to replace your car for whatever reason, and you have a very long commute, something like a 20-ish mile long commute, which I think is kind of wild. If, if this is something that you wanted to do, um, this bike would definitely be able to like take you to work, take you home, and then, you know, you'd have to charge it up overnight. Are they riding through the forest? Because I'm just like, why would you want this much bike if you're gonna do road biking? I, I think that it's not necessarily for road biking. This would be a commute where you're gonna have, where you know that you're going to be encountering some, you know, off -road some, stuff. some curbs, some potholes. really, you know, some potholes, some really bad terrain. Um, and so you wanna be able to, and also on the weekends, take this bike into the woods if you want to. I think that it, it really can do a lot because you have this massive battery. Look, you have to have a lot of etiquette to be on a bike path with other bikers and people walking their dogs and pushing strollers. You can't be zooming around at 25 miles an hour, but this bike can do that. So this bike has an app. It's basically just so that way you can unlock the top speed of 28 miles an hour for this e-bike. Yeah, you don't have to. Right. <laughs> um, the thing that I really like about a 28 mile an hour top speed is that when you are biking, you are inevitably going to have to go onto a road that is not really made for a bike. Um, we haven't built our world for bikes and e-bikes. And so being on a road with fast moving traffic is really scary and it's fairly dangerous. Being able to go up to 28 miles an hour means that traffic is going to be relative to you slower. They're going to have more time to see you mm. and react to you. So instead of coming upon you and you're going 10 and they're going, you know, 40, um, it's going to kind of feel like they're coming up on you only going 20 and they'll have plenty of time to slow down and move over and for you to be visible. Yeah, you get out of those dangerous situations faster. Exactly. The screen shows all your basics, uh, battery capacity, speedometer, odometer, pedal assist level, but then it also shows your wattage, which is kind of cool. Now it does it in steps because all it's really doing is looking at the amps in steps of like one amp and then it multiplies it by 48 <laughs> and then two amps. Now when it comes to safety, this bike has a headlight and a tail light. Um, the tail light actually turns on when you pull the brake, which is kind of nice. So yeah. lets other riders and even motorists around you know when you're braking. Um, when you turn on the headlight, it'll keep the brake light on, but it'll flash it when you brake. So I do think that that's a really nice set of features uh, for an e-bike. So it came really well packaged. It comes about 90% assembled. Uh, we did have to put on the front wheel, the front fender, uh, the handlebars just need to be put on and tightened, and the headlight. Headlight, uh, seat of course, and the pedals. So it took about, what, half an hour? 
Yeah, and depending on your skill level, this could take a little bit longer or a little bit less. We've been doing this a while, so we were kind of used to putting on front wheels and stuff like that. I would say probably is going to involve two people. Yeah, it comes with all the tools you need. And uh, like I said, half an hour and you're pretty much ready to go. In the 48 contiguous states, you get the free shipping. You get 15 day returns, which I think is really nice. And you get a three year warranty with free replacement, they say, on the two batteries. So that can kind of put your mind at ease if you're like, how long is the battery going to last? Three years is a pretty long time. Oh, and by the way, on their website, they had over 200 what looked like really honest reviews with pictures and I mean, really good descriptions from people. So if you still want more information, you're like, well, they didn't talk about that one thing I want to know about. Head on over to the website, read those reviews and find out if it kind of meets your needs. What do you think about the build quality? Well, I think that the paint job is great. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Hokai did a great job on the on that. The welds are looking a little meh. You well, know, you're a welder. You I'm, notice I'm a welder now, so I care about that kind of thing. But I think that it is a little bit noticeable, especially when you have like this little patch -y area right here. Yeah, just note to the manufacturer, if you just, you know, buff these out, at least in the easy to spot spaces, it would really make your frame look a lot nicer. But of course, you know, you're paying for you're paying for this right here, the batteries. Right. I mean, this um, is a sub $2,000 bike. Exactly. I think that you're getting a lot for this bike. And if they had to buff out all the welds and stuff like that, it would make the bike more expensive. And if they had to hire better welders, it would make the bike more expensive. Uh, again, I think that it's all about value here. Um, but it's just something to point out. If this is something that's going to bug you, uh, maybe consider it. I don't know. What I do want to talk about is the extra value you get with this. Um, so you're going to get the fender kit included. That's $69 for mm -hmm. free and the rear bike rack, which is $79, that comes for free. So, I mean, a lot of extra value you're getting, and you might be like, bike rack, fenders, who cares? I actually think the fenders is really important, especially if you're gonna have these off-road tires, you're gonna go a little off-roading, it's gonna get messy, this keeps you nice and clean, and the bike rack always is gonna come in handy for something that you're not thinking about that you can strap down to it. So I think it's two nice additions that are free additions. Now, the fenders are plastic, and they're a little wibbly-wobbly. Uh, this one's held in by just one single bolt, um, and so you can can get some, uh, you know, rubbing and some some moving around. Again, it's just to keep the water and the dirt off of you. So I, I don't really care that much. Um, it's just like, do you care about it? The seat itself is fine. I mean, it's got a very firm uh, gel, but I just found after a few miles that my butt was getting a little tired. Um, but this is easily replaceable. Yeah, and I think with e-bikes, it's really tempting to want to lower the seat kind of all the way down because you don't have to put in that much work. So your knees can bend a lot more. I've found that the higher you raise the seat, the more comfortable you're going to be because you're going to be putting more uh, pressure on your feet, mm. which are on the pedals mm. and less weight on your butt. Good point. Um, but the other thing too is the higher you go, the more weight you're going to be putting on the handlebars with this particular bike. And then when you get to a stop, because this frame, it is a dropped frame, it does doesn't go completely straight, but it's not dropped enough if you know what I mean anatomy wise. So um, for me, I like to have the seat low enough so that when I do stop, I can easily get my foot on the ground. Right, more like a motorcycle as opposed to, well, you've seen people biking before and right, they fall over. <laughs> Okay, so Jesse, um, since you can get this without a second battery, would you buy it with a second battery or without? Well, there are some pros and cons. Obviously, the pro is that you're getting uh, more range for just $100 more. Uh, the downside is that it it's far more visible. Um, more people are going to be able to tell that that's an e-bike. Some people care a lot about, well, oh, they have an e-bike. Ah! If that's a consideration, maybe you don't go for it. The other thing is it's kind of taking up your storage space. Mm, your water bottle space or your storage space. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, if you wanted a bag or something, uh, you know, they have some bags that can go here, but you obviously have put it here. you'd yeah. have to put it on the on the rear. Um, and you can do the same thing with your water bottle as well. Right. It's just like, you know, do you want the look of it? Now, I can't speak to the non second battery version. Maybe there's some spots uh, for a water bottle holder basically where the battery is. Again, though, the nice part about e-bikes is that you kind of don't need to bring the water bottle with you because you're not putting in that much effort and you're not gonna get so hot and sweaty that you're going to need to like drink water. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you're probably getting an extra 20, 25 miles out of that battery. So it just depends whether you need it or not. Because I mean, why carry around the extra weight if you don't need it? Yeah. But like you said, it's only an extra hundred bucks, which is a really good price for a battery pack, so. Right, and it could be that you, uh, most of the time, don't even put it on your bike. True. Makes it a little bit less visible. Of course, you're still not having the, you know, the water bottle space, um, but you could leave this one at work for the day that you kind of forgot to charge the main battery to full. That's and this point. could be, you, you know, your emergency battery to get home. 
Now, one of the interesting things that you can do with this e-bike is if you notice down here, you can actually disconnect the second battery. Well, you could just take it off. Here's my thought. You disconnect your second battery. You kind of tie this up, this uh, little plug out of the way. Okay, MacGyver. Then you go for a bike ride. Yeah. Completely kill this battery. Kill it, right? Go, go all wibbly wobbly on your amazing adventure. Okay. The battery is dead. You know that it is dead. Okay. Then what? you plug back in the secondary battery. Okay. And that gets you home. Okay. So that way you have now maximized your adventure. I see. Maximum adventure. Maximum adventure. Maximum e-bike adventure. But isn't this battery bigger than this battery? So this battery won't get you home. Well, this is, you know, this is your adventure battery. This battery is it's like- straight home. Get straight home. <laughs> okay. Or it's, it's your backup, basically. It could act as more of a backup instead of having to rely on the uh, battery, you know, thing, which usually isn't terribly accurate. And this well, way- Why couldn't you take this off and strap it to your back rack? You could do that as well. I'm just saying it's so cool that you could actually unplug it directly. Gotcha. Overall, I was pretty pleased with it. I think for getting in sub $2,000 for double batteries is kind of amazing. And if this is what you need, uh, it's a great bike. I do think that you might want to look at some of our other reviews. We just reviewed the Hobsco Hob Scout, which is a very similar build, but I liked it better. So maybe go see why we did. And let us know in the comments down below what you think and what you want us to review, because we're here for you. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. That means that we can give you more reviews of more products. And don't forget that we do a show about EVs and Tesla and sustainability over on Now You Know channel. So make sure you find us there every Tuesday for Tesla Time News. We will see you guys soon. Now let's review.